Stephen, you're announcing your half-year results today. What are the key highlights? You know, we think these are an excellent uh, set of results. We're very proud of them. Uh, and in particular, not just because of what we can show, the actual accomplishments which are really beginning to come through now strongly in our turnaround of RSA, but because I think it gives us, and I hope others, confidence that there is much more uh, to come from RSA as well. Uh, in headline terms, we have operating profit up 88% to 260 million pounds, pre-tax profits up over 300%. Uh, we're reinstating our interim dividend uh, at 3.5p. Our top line itself uh, has started to grow again in our core businesses. Uh, and so right across the business, both the headline news and the underlying news is going in the right direction. But this is not, if you like, a piece of good weather or something like that. This, the underlying is supportive of all of those numbers. Our loss ratios are getting better. Our costs are getting better. Our balance sheet is getting better. Uh, and all of the action plans that we have in place are starting to deliver. There's a long way to go. We need to get better still, uh, but I think we take encouragement from today. So um, some of the best results for the UK and Canada in recent years, what's driven this? Well, in insurance, of course, you always have ups and downs in different periods. Uh, but we are really pleased uh, that, as you say, in our biggest business in the UK and in Canada, which is uh, one of our other very major businesses, we have, in both of those countries, the best half year for nearly a decade. Uh, and uh, in Scandinavia, while uh, the results are not so good in the first half, the underlying uh, picture is also uh, very strong. Uh, and so this is a combination of some things that were fortunate in the period, uh, it went the other way in Scandinavia, and underlying work which has improved our profitability, uh, stabilised and improved what customers are seeing from us and is reducing our costs. And so the underlying picture is improving even though the headlines uh, in two countries have gone our way and one country uh, not quite gone our way. Now you've made more progress on your transformation programme in the first half. What have been the key achievements and what can we expect to see over the next six months? Our transformation plan had three ingredients. It was to focus the company's strategy on our strongest businesses where we believe we can get excellent long-term performance and the company can flourish for many decades to come. Uh, to fix the negatives on our balance sheet, both of those tasks are nearing completion. Uh, and that leaves the key third task which is to make sure that this is a company that wins for its customers and its shareholders to improve our performance levels. Uh, we can improve what we offer customers, and we are doing. Uh, we will improve our underwriting skills and results to reduce loss ratios, and we will reduce our costs. And all of that should produce a company that is much more profitable as it should be, that pays good dividends to shareholders, but is doing it uh, from sustainable, high-quality service to our customers. That's the game plan. The game plan we've been at for 18 months. Naturally, there's a lag before you see results. I think we can see the first quarter uh, results started to go the right way. The second quarter is built on that. Uh, we very much hope this is a trend uh, we can continue, and we're certainly setting our ambition on continuing it and raising our sights still further uh, towards best in class in each of our markets. OK, so that's the game plan. You talk of increasing momentum. What, what is the outlook for the rest of the year? The outlook for the rest of the year, uh, in the same way as I think it will be in every half year uh, that we go through, is to do two things. We want to factually deliver to make sure that our results, at least on an underlying basis, continue to improve across the key things that we've laid out in profitability and customer experience and costs. Uh, and we want to make sure that we are laying the foundations to keep them improving and to narrow the gap, hopefully to eliminate the gap over time between us and the best of our competitors in each market. I mean, you talk about transforming RSA into a best in class business. What, what does that actually mean? And you know, if we look forward to 2017, what sort of shape will the business be in? We've crafted a strategy for RSA based on 90% or so of our businesses being in three large, I believe, attractive core markets linked in Northern Hemisphere characteristics, if I can put it that way. And I think our company, if run well, can flourish with that strategy for many decades to come. 
Uh, in order for it to flourish, even though we've set the right strategy, we need to get the performance right so that we keep customers happy. We already are in the upper half, maybe even the upper quartile, uh, generally in most customer measures, but we need to keep that up in a world that keeps demanding more in terms of delivery for customers. And in particular, we need to move the pendulum for our shareholders. They've had a rough old time with RSA in recent years, uh, and we need to make sure that that patience is rewarded with sharply improving results, with dividends uh, that uh, follow that, uh, and with um, a performance level that is sustainable and, as I say, in our ambition, uh, gets us uh, to be the best around. That's our ambition. There's been a lot of speculation about the future ownership of the business. What can you say about that? And is that going to change your priorities? Clearly, our major duty as management, as board, is to deliver the best RSA we can, regardless of ownership. Uh, and so all of our efforts are how do we keep improving our company, delivering for customers and shareholders, and ratcheting up, first of all, our plans and our ambitions, and then delivering against those improved plans and ambitions. So that's what we are focused on. And whoever owns this company, that's what the owners will want. Uh, of course, we have a lot of pride in this company. We think this company can accomplish great things. We think the strategy can last successfully for years. We think we can um, achieve our targets of sharply improved and sustained performance. And we think that that will make this company on a standalone basis very valuable. What the shareholders do with those facts, uh, whether they're alternatives, whether or not, is down to them. Uh, but we're proud of the company that we're building. Stephen, thank you. Thank you.